Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in the second video tutorial on setting up Drupal on Amazon, I want to walk you through how we actually install Drupal using Drush uh, and configure all the dependencies we need on our Linux instance. But before we do that, here I am at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my series as I complete them. Uh, I've been a bit delinquent, but I hope to get some up soon. Um, the more you buy, the more you save. Only $20, and each purchase goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know how these tutorials help you. Both are greatly appreciated. Back at the dashboard here, you can see we're still initializing, uh, but that's because I was walking through the tutorial and I was running into some errors and I didn't want to bore you with walking through all of the fixes. So I'm going to redo this. Uh, so I'm just initializing a uh, EC2 instance, but while we do that, we can still walk through uh, what we mean by the status checks. I can't actually show you that, so we'll come back to that. Um, but we should be able to at least try to uh, access this with a public IP. And so we can start preparing that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up putty gen because I am on Windows. And so I got a PEM file. What I need is a PPK file for putty. So I'm just going to open up my PEM file here. And uh, normally you would enter in a passphrase. I don't care because I'm just trying to do this quickly. I'm going to save my private key. Yes, I don't care about the passphrase. Test PPK. Go ahead and save that. We're going to overwrite it. No problem. Now we have that. Now what I'm going to do is open up putty exe here. And if you're on Linux, you don't have to do this. You would just SSH directly. But uh, you'll see here AWS video. This is what I created for um, this video uh, to get into the server. And you'll see I've got EC2-user. So that's the username that I'm going to be logging in. That's the default user for all Amazon instances. And we'll go ahead at, and then we're going to take this IP that we've got, and we're going to add it in there. So this is 148-144-72. You could also use the public DNS if you wanted to. Last thing that I need to do is down in SSH here, you need to open up, go to authenticate, and I need to browse and choose my test PPK file. So I would want to go ahead and I'd want to save this. Okay, we're good there. And then just while we're waiting, I know that using PuTTY, my blue is really going to suck and it's going to be tough for you to see. And so I just want to make that easier for you to see. And then I also want to have the appearance, change this to a nice 18 font so you can see what we're doing here. And I can go and I can save all of this. So we're good. I don't know if it's going to let us actually get into it yet. Oh, well, that's great. So you see here, it's going to ask me, uh, here's the fingerprint for your server. Are you sure? Um, I'm sure because I don't really care because I'm going to take this down, but you might want to confirm that. And now I'm actually into this service. So first thing you want to do, sudo yum update just like it tells you to do and what this means is um, substitute user do that substitute user is root and so that root user has permission to do everything um, and so that's what we're doing sometimes it's uh, misconceived uh, as um, super user do but that's not actually what it means so now we've got that I want to install a couple packages and then we're going to walk through how we fix things when we go ahead um, and uh, start installing Drupal. So we're going to leave a couple packages out intentionally. Um, so definitely come back. But while you do this, what you want to do is just do a quick Google search for uh, EC2 setup lamp because there's some nice tools in there that we're going to be using. And you go to this first one from Amazon. And I'm going to actually be walking through this. I'm not going to bore you with uh, the details of it. But um, there are some things that I'm going to do out of that. So now that I'm connected, I've done my update. I want to do sudo yum install the php mysql php pair we're going to use that in php um yeah so if i install those you'll see um it's going to install php the three that i'm asking it to install and then it's going to install some other tools one of which is apache so i need that so that's good and then you'll see it's installing uh some libraries for mysql and then it's installing some, uh, you know, I've got the PDO class here that I'm going to need actually to connect to MySQL. And without that, uh, we would have a problem when we go to install. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. Now we've got all that installed. And so according to the Amazon walkthrough, what you want to do next is actually start that service. And so it's started. And you want to run this command, uh, check config HTTP on. And so what that means is anytime you restart your server, it'll ensure that HTTP starts. Uh, and HTTPD is Apache. 
So next thing that we want to do um, ba, 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 is actually check our instance. Can we get to it? And we're not going to be able to get to it because in the security group, we uh, are just confirming here that we can't actually get to it because we only allowed SSH access. So if you look at this guy and we go to security groups, you can see only SSH is allowed and only from my IP. So let's edit this and let's add a rule. And that rule is going to be enable all HTTP access. So all web access on port 80 is the default from anywhere. Go ahead and save that. Now we can reload this page and boom, we're hitting the Apache page. So that is great. That's exactly what we want to see. Going back to our terminal, we can continue on with the um, with the uh, Amazon walkthrough. And it tells you to add uh, a group called www. We don't really need that because Apache is going to be using Apache as a group. And the Apache user is in the Apache group. And so we're going to actually use those guys. Um, so we're going to actually add EC2. Uh, oops, but EC2 to user. Um, now it is possible to follow this guideline uh, or this walkthrough from Amazon and do it all as www and then make Apache part of the www uh, group. Um, and you know what? What the hell? Why don't we do that? Um, I'm going to switch up the tutorial here. So control C, we're going to go sudo group add www, right? We're going to add our user to www. Okay. And then it wants us to log out. And then we're going to log back in. And I really hope this doesn't blow up in our face as I show you stuff. So groups, you'll see that now we have www, so that's great. So we're going to follow these commands from the walkthrough. So this is step four. Uh, to change the www folder um, in var www to be owned by root uh, www. And so um, that's fine. So we can do that and we're going to make sure we find all files and do that. And then we're going to make sure that the, uh, uh, the right permissions. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, it's going to tell us to test PHP, but we know PHP is working. So we're not going to bother doing that. Now what we need to do is actually um, run the secure installation for MySQL. And so first thing we need to do before we do that is actually start the service. MySQL D, why is that not a found service? Did we miss something on the install? Um, we probably need to do sudo yum install MySQL server. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna install that bad boy. And then we go back, we can restart. There we go, so we've started the service. And now we wanna do the secure install. We're not actually gonna use MySQL on this um, EC2 instance in terms of having a database on the instance. We're going to connect to a remote host, but we still need all of this to install Drupal uh, and have it running properly. So sudo my secure uh, install, enter a default pass, enter the current password for root. We don't have one. Do you want to set it? Sure. Uh, just creating one here. You're going to do this as well. Remove. So then in the uh, Amazon walkthrough, you'll see that it wants you to remove yes and you want to disable yes. You want to remove the test database and you also want to reload the privileges. So there we go. And now sudo service mysql d stop. Right. Um, and I'm not sure we actually need that when we install Drupal. We'll find out. Um, mysql d, uh, make sure it's on when we restart the service. Okay. So now what we need to do is we actually need to go into var www and you'll see we have html so we're going to actually move html so html is going to become http docs and in http docs we are going to make a directory i guess i didn't need to do that um no we're not now we need to get drush so to get drush there is a nice handy pair.drush.org And Drush actually recommends that you do this all through Composer and everything now, but I still like using the, the pair installation. I don't know how long it'll be supported, um, but I can do a pair channel discover pair. Uh, I spelled discover wrong. Pair Drush org, right? And of course, it's not going to be able to find it because we're going to do that with sudo. And there we go. And now if you go sudo, I don't think you need to do sudo. If you do pair remote, list dash the drush 
this is going to show you the packages that are available. So that's great. So we need that. So we're going to go pair install drush slash drush dash 6.2.0.0. It's probably going to tell me it can't because I didn't do sudo. Yeah, let's just stop that because I know it's not going to be able sudo. And there we go. So now we've uh, got drush installed. So if we go sudo drush, see all the commands. We want to do sudo drush install Drupal. Oh, sorry, sorry. Dumb of me. Uh, Drupal. Sudo drush dl Drupal. Okay, so now we've got that. And you'll see we've got Drupal. Uh, so we're going to move Drupal into a folder called our site. So that would be whatever you want it to be. And now we need to set up Apache. So etc httpd uh, conf slash conf dash d. Yeah. Oh, that's because we need sudo. We need to do this as root. Uh, HTTP conf. So first thing we need uh, before we forget. Okay, so here we go. So user Apache group is actually going to be www. Right, so that tells us uh, how to change that. Then what we need is document root. Okay, and our document root is no longer slash HTML. It's HTTP docs. And we're only going to be running one site from this. So this is going to be our site. So that's where it's going to look for files. Now, if you were doing this differently and you had multiple sites, uh, it's a little bit different. You need a virtual host down at the bottom. It talks about how to do that. Um, but we're not going to do that. Maybe we'll do that in a video tutorial. Uh, if there's some interest, you just have to let me know. So same thing here for directory. We're pointing to our site. And then we can go sudo service httpd restart because we made some changes. And so now we've got it restarted. And if we go to our site page here, now we should get an install. So that's great. So save and continue. We're going to continue. We're going to get a bunch of problems here. So one we need to install is php-gd. I told you we would be walking through this together. sudo yum install php-gd. Yep, install those. That's great. Okay. Then down here, uh, actually, we re need to reload this. So sudo service httpd restart. Okay, restarted. Reload this page. Now you'll see that our file system is incorrectly set up. So if we actually go and check that out, cd our site. And then we're going to go into cd sites default. And that's l slash la here. And so right now we see that it's created by root www. And if we go up, same thing, root www which is good, except you can see the group here doesn't have the ability to write. And so only root can write, but anybody in the www can't write. So we have to change that. So sudo uh, chmod, and then we're going to do it as 775 default. And let's do that. I don't know if you can add the flag at the end, but we'll do it here recursively. Um, ls-la, right? And now hopefully we reload this page. You see our file system's good. Uh, so two more things. We need to install another PHP uh, library. So sudo yum install PHP mb string. Yes. sudo service httpd restart. Reload our page. There we go. Unicode's good. And last thing we need is to move our settings file. So ls into the default. And we'll take a look at that. Uh, we're going to move, nope, we're not going to move. We're going to copy default into settings.php because it needs to have a file. Reload our page and boom, we can now start installing. So this is where we're going to link up our RDS instance. So we're doing this with uh, SQL, uh, MySQL here. Let's go back to our console. Actually, let's just make sure in the advanced options down here. Yeah, okay, great. So what we need to do is go to services, RDS, instances. And here's our instance. We can get some details on it. So remember, our database name is DevOps Toot. Ah, oh, crap. Sorry about that. DevOps Toot uh, for tutorial. Um, this is not what I created with you in the last video tutorial. I redid this uh, if you're wondering. So my database name is going to be that guy. My database user is going to be this guy. My database password. Hopefully you remember this when, when you set it up. And here we go. So now what we actually do... Normally, you use localhost if your database is going to be on the same server. Ours is not. Ours is actually going to be on this guy. So we want to copy, oops, we want to copy 
all of that. We're going to take out the port. Right? And so there we go. That's our host. And then our port is 3306. It's going to be standard. And we can save and continue. Hmm. We got a problem there. We couldn't actually connect. Database server running, yes. Does it exist? Yes. Let's figure out what we did. DevOps. DevOps tutorial. This is the database name. Database user is Drupal user. And this is likely a permissions issue. We did not enable. We'll check. Oh, I think I know why. So launch wizard two is what is permitted to do this. And so inbound, right? Inbound. So we are using a security group for launch wizard two. And that's the same as our RDS instance, but you can see we're only allowing SSH and HTTPD. We need to edit this and add a rule so that we can enable, uh, where is my SQL? Yeah. And we should enable the custom IP. For now, we'll do it anywhere, but we're gonna edit this because from our RDS instance, we're gonna go and check out our EC2 instance. And hmm, this is gonna be a bit of a test because if we look at this running one, we're gonna use the private IP. And we're gonna add that into our MySQL connection. So this is gonna be custom IP slash 32. And I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work, but we're going to test this out. And so I'm going to now save this. Okay, and there we go. We've got it installed. So um, just a reminder, because I had to cut out a bunch of crap there. Um, so what we did here was we had to add MySQL uh, port 3306. And then this is the private IP of our EC2 instance. So down here. And uh, once you do that, Boom, you're set, ready to go. So we'll just call this uh, our site. Let's do test. You would obviously configure this as whatever you want it to be. Username, it's just gonna be test, whatever, I don't care. Um, add in all this stuff, right? Um, you choose your default country, um, Canada. You really don't even need to watch me do all this. Uh, you can leave all that set up and then you should remove the right permission. So we'll actually go and check to make sure to do that. And we'll save and continue. Okay, now if you visit your new site, boom, you have a Drupal site on EC2 with RDS. And last thing that we wanna do, just as it mentioned, ls-la, let's try 440, so sudo, chmod 440, settings, ls-la. Okay, so now only two can read it, which is good. Reload this page, make sure we're still good. Yep, we're still good. And we'll just add content just to make sure. And we see it got written to the database, we're good. We don't have clean URLs enabled. Um, so maybe we'll do that in the next video tutorial series, or I don't know, we'll do, let's check it out right now. Okay, so we just need to go into our sudo vim slash etc httpd, uh, whatever, conf slash httpd conf. And so, um, what is it like HT access or something like that? Allow override all, right? So what this did was you'll see HTTP docs, our site under directory. Um, what we can do is we can allow, uh, it can be all. And so this allows our HT access file to override what's going on in our settings here. And so sudo service HTTP restart. There we go. Reload our page. And I hate this configuration, but whatever. Um, there we go. Clean URLs. Enable them. Save. We're clean. Go to home page. We're good. Let's add, uh, let's check out our content. Test, test node one. Clean URL. Looking good. Boom. We've got our site set up. So that's it. I know I went a little bit longer than I wanted to. I was hoping to keep this under 20 minutes so you could have it quick and up to date. Um, but that's it. Uh, we now have a Drupal site up. We're using EC2. We're using RDS. You're out in the cloud and you're able to scale and do some crazy stuff once you start driving some real traffic to your site. So hopefully this helped you. If it did, leave a comment. Let me know. Greatly appreciate it.